Okay. Hello, this is Creator Talk Live. I'm Brian Thomas Schmidt. Every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 o'clock Central U.S. time, we interview the best authors, artists, and musicians right here live on TikTok. We get people who are regulars on TikTok. We get people who are newer to TikTok. We get even some people, when I can, I get people that aren't on TikTok and bring them on. Um, we're working out all the bugs to that right now. This is episode number nine. Uh, for me, you can check out all the, if you go to my, my beacon link at the top of my profile, you can check out the third tab down as creator talk live that you go straight to my YouTube channel where you can see all the episodes that have been put up there for you. The past episodes we have, we cover all genres, all different kinds of authors and, and so on and so forth. We're still working on getting our musicians and artists guests, but believe me, that is the long-term goal. We will get that on this show. In the meantime, I am the author and editor of uh, let's see, 22 anthologies, seven of which were number one bestsellers. I also have uh, this new novel, which I always screw this up. You have to hold it up funky. Shortcut is my latest. You can check the first tab on that same drop-down menu at the top of my profile and check out that. You can check out my John Simon thrillers. And like I said, I've done a lot of uh, X-Files and other stuff. And I'm also a professional editor with Top Shelf Editing. And I have edited everything from Andy Where's the Martian on down to many other things that weren't quite as known. But uh, that is my main gig. So tonight's guest is an author, and she's obviously teaches writing too. Her name is Melissa Ban Banzak. Banzak, close. Super close, yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, yeah. Sorry, it's one of those tricky names. I want to make sure I get it right. She is um, uh, does cozy mysteries, and we're going to talk about that and her process. She's also going to be joining me and about 300 of our closest friends next or more at next week. Actually, there'll be probably more like 3,000 of our closest friends in the beginning. Uh, we're, we're all yeah. we're all at the, the 20 books uh, to 50K convention at the Horseshoe in Las Vegas all next week. And then on Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., we're doing a mass signing there that's free to the public. So you can come. That's where you'll see 300 authors. You can see me and Jonathan Mayberry will be sharing a table. Kevin J. Anderson will be there. Uh, Craig Martell, if you've heard of him, Melissa will be there. Dee Dee Black, who was on here the other day, is going to be there. Mar Mary Mayweather, who was on here a, a, a little bit ago, is going to be there. Um, there's going to be Terry Wells Brown and a whole uh, David Weber. Um, I'm trying to think of all the authors you might know. Britt Allen. Um, there's a whole lot of people that will be there from all different genres. You can you can win Kindles. You can win all kinds. There's all kinds of giveaways. Amazon usually gives away a couple Kindles. And uh, which selfishly I always want to win and never do, but <laughs> yeah, same, same. But, but uh, nonetheless, they are. Uh, there's a lot of readings and all kinds of stuff going on. So you can come yeah. enjoy that if you want to and, and see us. Um, there's more information on. There's videos on my, that are pinned on my profile about it. So if you need that, anyway. In the meantime, Melissa, welcome to the show. It's glad Thank to have you. you. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, this will be great. So basically, talk, let's talk a little bit about you. Who, who, you know, who are you, and where? What made you want to be a writer? Me. <laughs> okay, so um, I have been writing uh, since well, forever. I mean, story-wise, storytelling. I'm sure most writers are like this. That I, I started telling myself stories. Wait, in my day, I'm a little older than everybody else. So in my day, we didn't have VCRs. We had three TV channels, and uh, if you missed a TV show, you know, you never saw it again. So yeah. I had a tape recorder. And so I would tape record TV shows, my favorite TV show, Six Million Dollar Man, Incredible Hulk, Bionic Woman. Oh, my God, I wanted to be the Bionic Woman. And I actually have cochlear implants. So I kind of am the Bionic Woman because I can turn up my implants and hear yeah. a couple tables away. Um, so uh, I would I would record these TV shows and then I would listen back. And so I got pretty good at dialogue and I used to screenwrite. I was a literary I have agent. old episodes of, of Love Boat and MASH and Hill Street Blues and yes, Battlestar Galactica that I taped back in the day. So I did yes. the same thing. That was the only way we had before yes. the VCR came along. That's right. Yes. I would listen to them over and over again, and I could remember everything that happened. And so dialogue, like I said, I screen wrote, and I was a literary agent for a while. And I just, I would cry all the time when my writers would get rejected. I think I took it worse than they did. And so I just couldn't. And then my boss retired and I didn't want to move to LA to work with me in the other office. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, and so then I didn't do anything for a long time. And then uh, a friend of mine 
Um, because I had worked in film, I, I was a literary agent for um, uh, some authors and some screenwriters. And so because of that, a friend of mine made a film. And I said to my husband, I can do a better film than that. <laughs> and he's like, okay, fine, get the equipment and do it. And, and I did. And so I did film for a while. And then um, I got screwed by a producer, I won't say who, and it's actually somebody. Anyway, um, I got screwed by a producer and I said, I'm going to books and I'm never going to get screwed again. Well, so, you learned all about the sharks of Hollywood, which all of us have oh, yeah. dealt with Hollywood. So yes, uh, yep. gorgeous. So went to books in 2017. I've been publishing since then. I started with, my husband is was, is, was a amateur herpetologist. So we had a hundred snakes at one point. And you, you said amateur, not immature, right? <laughs> am amateur, yeah, you know, yeah, amateur. yeah. So, so he, he, <laughs> for some reason, I heard it the wrong way. Okay, and, yeah. uh, herpetologist. So, uh, he loved snakes and loved going out and getting, you know, snakes. So, he had this big snake okay. thing. So, we had so many snakes, we had like 100. Uh, yeah, actually, it was a little over 100 because I had to keep records. He went to uh, overseas to work with NATO for a year, and I had to take care of the snakes by myself for a year. And I thought about interesting ways to kill him. And then realized that I was probably going to go to jail because, I mean, look at my hair. I, I'm not going to get away with murder and not leave something at the scene. I've been doing this for a lot, you know, more than like 12, 14 years. Did the, did the ways of killing him involve the snakes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so then uh, one day we had a, a boa that was about nine feet long and she was about this thick around. She might have been 11. She was pretty big. So my daughter would put her in the spare bedroom to take a shower. And she would turn the shower on. The, the snake would be in the shower. And as she finished, she would climb out of the shower. And she would turn the shower off. And she would go climb and hang on the light pole, on the light fixture. And so I walked in. I didn't know she was in there one day. And I walked in. And I got, I mean, I had a snake right up against my face. Big, you know, the tongue was going in and out. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to die. And so I slowly backed out and um, sat down and wrote the first scene for my book, which is probably backward, but it's How to Sex Your Snake is the first one in the series. And her brother is a world famous herpetologist. She's his personal assistant. His fans hate her. They're the doozers. And they have this I hate June Nash dot com website that they talk about all the horrible ways she keeps them away. So that was the first one I did. And now I have four and I just, this one just came out this week, How to Stroke Your Stray. And it takes place in Vegas. So I'm so excited to be taking this one to Vegas. How to stroke uh, your stray. Oh. Yeah, how to stroke your stray. Very, and there's very there's uh, new... very provocative titles there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got um <laughs> how to how to sex your snake, how to bungle your jungle, how to square your grouper, how to launch your lizard, how to stroke your stray. The next one that I'm writing is how to squeeze your squid. And um anyway, I I'll start work on that when I get back from Vegas. <laughs> Oh, thank and, you. and then the other stuff I do also is uh, prompts for authors. So you roll dice and create prompts. And then you have, um, like, here's a prompt y'all can have if you can read it. So you can either do what's, what's suggested on the page, or you can, I'm sorry, it's backward, everybody. Or you can um, just roll the dice. And a lot of people just roll the dice. And, uh, and like, there's a character. So you could roll the dice and get, like, a elderly werewolf. <laughs> That was the wrong control. Sorry. Oh, so it's okay. It's like, where'd you go? No, no, I'm, I'm there. I just, I, I hit the wrong button and I was trying to uh, do something, but yeah, it's fine. Keep talking. Keep talking. I'll take so yeah. So like you can roll for a character like this one um, has an elderly werewolf, a blackjack dealer, telephone pole climber, a high school choir director, a highwayman patrolman, highway patrolman, and a mortgage lender. And then you roll for a trait. So it's dramatic, unafraid, honest, print, Perniskity, pernix, I can't, per, perniskity, I can't say that word. Close talker and a realist, and then you roll for location, counselor's office, diner counter, in a bathtub, in a stockroom, hiding under a porch, in blinding snow squall. And you just roll a dice, a six-sided dice, and then you create a prompt. And we get, we have, I have, um, there I am. I have nine out and another, like, bunch that are still coming out. So, um, <laughs> anyway, anyway keep going. I'm sorry, I don't fun. know what happened. So, I can't figure, I can't figure it out. I'm trying to figure out how to get it back. Okay. Anyway, okay. So, so yeah, going, so we're, I've we're, got we're a, doing fine. Uh, we do these, I have a 
a, a podcast called Books Cubed, and we do these live on Books Cubed, and they're so much fun. And I had a guy that's that was on, and and he's writing a whole series based on a prompt he created, and it, they're they're fun. So that's my side. I write them with a, with a, a friend named Lisa Mahoney, and so that's my. And then I have fantasy. I don't know if you can see that picture up there. That's one of the characters from my fantasy, Amy of Earth. Amy oh, those, of Earth. Yellow, are you talking about the yellow one or the one next to it? The yellow one and the one next to it. So the okay. one next to it is okay. hard to see. It's it's a girl in the middle of all this trees and everything. She's got a thicket that is um, alive, and she's in. She went through a portal and she's in a place without any humans. That's on Amazon Vela. If anybody in the audience reads Vela, does anybody read Vela? <laughs> They might. they might. They might. I don't know. They we'll might. Find out. Yeah. Yeah. And even at, at, at 20 books last year, they had the Vela panel and the people in the pan and the audience knew more than the people on the panel about what Vela was, which I thought was, hmm, that's not good. Amazon should have known a little more what they were doing or send somebody that actually knew Vela. And like the first six months, you would have issues in call and, and everybody you talked to, nobody knew even what it was. Um, but it's fun. It's serial reading, and uh, it's just like you know reading a TV show. You know, you have a little episode that's is anywhere from 600 to 5,000 words. Mine tend to be around six to 15, uh, and they always end in a little cliffhanger. It says it's a serial, and then you just keep reading. Uh, and they're a lot of fun. There's a, there's a lot of really good ones on there. People should check out Amazon Vela. They used to give out free tokens. I don't know if they do still or, or not. Um, you would get like. 200 free tokens and that's enough usually to read but it's like every hundred words is one token so sometimes you can read like a whole season of somebody's book and and for my amy of earth there's about 188 pages i think up. well you just read a chapter at a time or something on vela yeah you just read a chapter at a time they call them episodes on vela oh, and gotcha. they're like so they're anywhere from 600 to 1500 words and i have always written uh my chapters as uh, little cliffhangers so Vela was just a really, uh, it, it was like it was made for me. It was something I already did, was writing little cliffhangers. So it, it's just so much fun. And it's like any of the other serial platforms out there. I know there's a bunch of them out there. Um, but anyway, so so yeah, that's um, that's me ranting, ranting on about my stuff that I do. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. So um, what's up, Anna? Uh, okay, so... You, you you started doing these cozies. Now, what made you, I mean, obviously you were creating ideas. You, you talked about how you were writing screenplays and different stuff. What did you study writing at some point? How did you learn your craft? I just started doing it. Uh, you know, you don't really need to. I know there's all kinds of people out there going, oh, you have to take these classes and you have to do this and you have to do that. No, take a pencil, take a piece of paper, take a computer and just start writing. Just start writing. The biggest thing is not to stop. And that's why we started doing the prompts is because people, they overthink. And I, I'm a huge overthinker. I will write the same paragraph a thousand times and edit it to death. And that's really bad. And uh, um, we had uh, one girl came on our podcast who's a, who's a fiction, nonfiction writer. And she said, oh, I've never written fiction and I'll never write fiction. She, we write for 20 minutes to 30 minutes and, and just write without picking up the pen and just writing. And she wrote the most amazing short story because she didn't think about it. So the biggest thing is to just to start writing. What do you like to read? Do you read romance? Do you read fantasy? Do you read science fiction? Whatever you like to read, try writing in that genre because that's what you read. So you already know what to expect. You know what needs to be on the page because you're a reader of that. And I don't think that anybody needs to do, hey, we're back. I don't yep. think, I mean, there are classes you can take. Yeah, and I know anybody who teaches classes would be like, don't listen to her. Um, and you can take creative writing classes because it's nice to be in a group setting and to read them to and get feedback. That's always good. But I think for writing, I would skip buying books. And I know people that buy book after book or go to class after class after class and they never produce anything. And I mean, that's the well, big thing. I, here's the deal. Some people have an instinct for storytelling. Some people have, ha, are really intuitive about picking it up and some people are not. You and I spent a lot of time studying TV shows. We picked up on a lot of the techniques and we started using them. But I, I did eventually start studying craft and learning different things and it made me a better writer. There were things that I did not intuitively understand. So I don't recommend that anybody not study writing. However, I, I will say if you, if you want to be a writer, you have to write. So you can't let 
the learning process stand in the way of actually getting something written. So that's the caveat I will give in that regard. Because yeah. I, I, I work every day with writers who do not intuitively get it and who need to study craft. And, you know, they're, they're spending oh. a lot of money paying me to fix something that really is not fixable until they learn what they're doing. You know, I can only yeah. do so much because yeah. I'm not going to rewrite it for you. That's not my job. And if I yeah. did, you'd be paying me about five times what you're paying me to edit your book. So, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I happen to be one of those people. You said you were good at dialogue. I'm pretty intuitive with dialogue. I've always been good at that. But when the, things like description are things I've had to really work on and learn. Uh, basic story, fundamental dramatic storytelling structure is something that I, I, I somehow intuitively knew pretty well. And it's just been reinforced by my studies. But I think there's a lot of different stuff. But anyway, I get, I get what you're saying. So you, yeah. you, you just started doing it. And, and But you became an agent at some point. You didn't have any kind of training for that or that was just kind of a, I mean, you were just helping somebody out. No, I started as a reader for an agent and uh, I would read screenplays and then I would write uh, anything that I liked. I would write a report on, this is what I liked about it. This is what, you know, it, this is the work it still needs, that kind of thing. And then I would get paid for every one of those that I did. I worked in commission and, um, and then one day um, my boss said, you know, actually you were pretty good. Um, I was good at um, making contacts uh, and uh, pretty good at picking out things that were that had potential. And uh, but as far as it was the early it was the early 90s to late 90s when I was doing this and uh, the world was really different. And at the time, I was really trying to push people to do something like Kindle. It was, I was way, we were way or too early for Kindle. And we kept saying, there's gotta be a way to do this so that people can write books and have them online and people can find them without having to go through the big publishers because they would say, oh, uh, nobody's gonna wanna read that. But everybody does. I mean, there's a woman that well, writes. Are, I mean, the, 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 the things that, the, the, the problem that you're talking about is the problem of assessing market value. And it's something that, that they're, they, they, they base it on certain formulas and certain calculations. And they don't always yeah, know. Yeah. Certain things they think are going to be niche break out wide. And yeah, that's what no. you're talking about. So some people get put in niche and sometimes they are niche. But that doesn't mean there's not a decent sized audience for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean it happens with big properties too. I was editing a, a Predator anthology, and then the, and the the movie The Predator failed, and then everybody said the franchise is dead. But every day I got hundreds of letters from fans that wanted me to do more, and it took it took me uh, four years to let them get them to do another. Then that was a bestseller for ten weeks on Amazon. So, yeah, that's... I mean, and and you know what what the movie studios consider uh, consider successful is 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 completely ridiculous standard for publishing. You know, for them, if they don't make, you know, they don't start making six figures out of the thing, they're not making anything decent. Whereas for us, if we if we sell 5,000 copies, man, that's a hit. That's a great, say, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, yeah. It, 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 it all depends on, and you're, you know, that's, so the difference is she's talking about the, the, the self-publishing where you can, you can, you can make do really well on a much smaller scale, whereas the big publishing companies are big corporations, and they're looking for the things that are going to feed the bottom line and the big multi-billion dollar budget or whatever it is that they've got more, you know, and then they'll throw out a few other books too, but that's, uh, that's the trick. And if you're going to do what she does, and we'll talk about this here in a minute, uh, she ha obviously spends a lot of time promoting and learning that. We'll talk about that aspect. So yeah. you wrote, what made you decide to do cozy mysteries when you decided to do cozy mysteries? Because of the, the killing thing or are you a big mystery well, um, you know, I, I love mysteries. I actually yeah. will read anything. Um, I'm not a huge romance, but I will read romance too. I mean, if something is recommended to me, yeah, I'll read it. Yeah. Um, but I, I pretty much read anything, but I really like um, just goofy beach. Mine are just goofy beach read type books. Those are my favorite ones to write. And uh, those are my favorite ones to read, really. Um, I, I grew up on the beach, and so I would always take a book with me and, and um, you know, thicker the better uh, when I was younger uh, and yeah. I think it was just and then I tried the style of writing too when I, the first one when I came up when I went from um, screenplay to writing writing a novel and trying to figure out how to do that and it took me a little while with the voice and what you know first person third person how do I want to do that on um, present tense um, past tense I, I don't like present tense I'm, I've discovered I don't even like reading it 
Um, uh, I don't. I don't either. I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of it, but I have to edit it every once in a while. But it is what it is. I mean, it's, there's certain lot. Why in particular? It's a very popular thing. But yeah, yeah right. Jonathan Maber and I are always talking about how first person drives us. You know the. Present tense, first person present tense and stuff really drives us crazy. You know? but I do have a friend that writes a Vela that is in present tense and I actually enjoy hers, but it's really think, a you know, fun character. Fun. So if it's well done, sometimes yeah. it surprises me and I like it, but a lot of times I don't, I find it yeah. really distances me, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so when you write, do you outline, do you, are you a pantser? How do you, how do you go about Massive outliner. Okay. So I'm going to move this so you can see, these are my outline boards behind me. These are whiteboards that I made. So this is my office. And um, the board that's directly in front of my desk has my, um, the day, the week, and the year of what I'm doing for there. And then each of my boards has, um, right now they have all the stuff I've had to do to get ready for Vegas, but normally they have the outlines for the books I'm working on. And I outline, I'm very anal about my outline, but that comes from screenplay because you have every single word has to do something for the script when you when you're screenwriting you cannot just willy-nilly write a 200 page screenplay 90 page in my day it was 90 pages if it was over 90 pages i didn't read it when i was an agent i tossed it in a no pile uh just because i didn't have time i got so many of them uh, so um you know it, it, i had to very uh, so i became very anal about my outlines and so i i when i start it's um from my from my cozies are usually 28 chapters so i start with 30 spot spaces and then I write three things that's going to happen in each of the chapters and then I go back and write a paragraph of what's going to happen to cover all the things that are in those those three then I jump in and sometimes I don't have the the middle done and this last book I think I rewrote the first 13 chapters for like a year over and over and over because it did not did not have the feel I wanted it did not feel like my character uh, and um, the readers, I haven't had a lot of reviews yet, but the my ARC readers have said it's their favorite one so far. So, um, so I'm taking what, that extra I mean, time. Yeah, no, I got you. So so you do it all on, on whiteboards? Do you have any kind of, what are your software? What's your, what's your like, what's your writing routine? I mean, you, you obviously have outlined heavily and then you sit down and write. Do you write on Scrivener? Do you write yeah, on Word? What I, do you do? I write on Vellum. Vellum. You write on Vellum. Vellum. That's the second person I've had. D.B. Yeah. Black does the same thing. He switched over from, from, from Scrivener or Word, I remember. So. Yeah. I, I started, in, started in Scrivener years ago, but there's it's just too much, and I don't want all that. So in Vellum, I have my series Bible as one chapter, and then I just open all – I write – I make 30 chapters, and then just put at the top of each one what's going to happen in those chapters, and then I just go to town and start writing. And so how many I, words is your typical novel? I mean, what, for you, what do you, what do you write? Uh, about between 50 and 60. Really? Okay. And yeah, they're those short. Are short. Those are kind of short chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The chapters are usually around 1,500 to 22, 2,400 words. I try to keep them short. Um, my readers like, they like to, well, I did have a guy that, that wrote me and said, he was really mad at me because he had to sit and read the whole book in one sitting. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, you know, uh, but I write on Zoom every day, Monday through Friday, not every day. I take weekends off. So I have a friend that we Zoom from eight o'clock, uh, about between eight and nine Eastern until noon to five, depending on if we have a deadline we're trying to make. Really? Zoom, you or, write together on Zoom. Yeah, my friend Amy and I write together on Zoom. And first we, we chat and then we talk about what we're going to do. And then if we have something that we want to run past the other, we interrupt and say, okay, listen to this, or look at this graphic I made for my promo or whatever. Then at the end, we talk about what we did. And um, she reminds me not to overthink it, which I do overthink it constantly. Um, but but it really has helped me so much by having the, my Zoom partner. Uh, she has written six books in three years, and I have written three, three and a half, I think, three and a half, because I, I was a little slower. Uh, and then my Vela, like I said, is I think I've got 56,000 words on the on Amy. I've got several Velas, but Amy's the biggest I, one. I got you. Okay. So you, 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 okay. Just for people who don't know, Cozy Mystery is kind of, Cozy Mystery is, is, is a format that is, um, 
uh, it's very popular. It's the Agatha. It's the Agatha Christie. It's the. Uh, it, they they have a lot of. They, they don't have a lot of graphic, you know, sex or violence in them. Yeah. They 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 kind of show after the fact effect and talk through things, but they don't actually show on screen that stuff. As opposed to the stuff I write, which is noir. Noir. Mine's oh, a green. Like more yeah. gritty detective thing. I do a lot of procedural research, so I do a lot of procedural stuff, and my stuff tends to. I mean. If the head comes off, you're going to see it. You know, I mean, it 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 is. It is a little more graphic. The, so the difference is cozy. Cozy tends to be. Um, there's a certain kind of reader that likes that. I like both personally. I can read both. I don't have a problem with either one of them. Um, sometimes I'm really in the mood for a fast, quick, light read that doesn't require a lot of work, and cozies work well for that for me. Sometimes I really want to yeah. dig in. Yeah. I really want to think. You know, and that's where the the more yes. deeper nuanced um uh uh detailed writing really really sucks me in and makes me think things through but you know cozies are also i don't want to say that cozies are not well thought because they are but that they all they also have the same kind of puzzle characteristics it's just a little different level of detail where uh, uh that you do so what made yeah. you decide to go that route? You were, here you were thinking about how, how you could kill your husband with snakes and all these things, and yet you decided uh, to go with a cozy. It's kind of interesting. You know, I, I don't know. I think I probably – usually when I wrote screenplays, I always started with one one scene, and then I would build around that. And I'm trying to remember. I think I wrote the scene first where um, the, she, she walks in and the snake is nose-to-nose -nose with her. And then I just kind of built it around. Uh, I did it, actually started the first one – in 2004, I wrote the first draft of this novel that I published in 2017 in NaNoWriMo 2004. And I wow. wrote, I wrote a hundred and I wrote my 150 pages and it didn't have an ending. And uh, I didn't, I, I liked the character, but I'd made some changes and um, I actually I did a whole different story. I, I kind of trashed that first one. I didn't really oh. use it, but I did like June and, and her brother. So so you I don't know, it's just, but you kind of went a different direction with the story. Yeah, went a different direction, and, and you know, I don't know. I, I don't like I don't like open door romance, so I wasn't going to write that. Um, there is uh, my readers always want the June and her arch nemesis Morgan to get together, and there is sometimes in one of the books she wakes up and he's uh, he was locked. He, he couldn't use his hotel room, so he's in hers, and of course he gets out of bed and he's not wearing anything, and she's all. Ah. I don't want to look um so i mean i kind of push i kind of push the limit of cozy what you're supposed to have in cozy uh, at times in the very yeah. first one she slips in a pool of blood you know uh, it's 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 nothing to and i didn't realize it was cozy i just thought it was mystery and then uh yeah, yeah, yeah. and but it's a different city every book is a different city and it's the couple of people there's three or four main characters that you see and then there's some five or six recurring characters uh, that are in different ones. And they come but the back. But you follow the typical cozy pattern, probably. Where, where basically you start out, there's a body. Pretty soon after it starts, they there's a murder and and they find a body, right? That kind of sometimes, thing. Sometimes, sometimes the first one, there's a pool of blood and a missing person. Uh, in the second one, she accidentally becomes a drug runner. In okay. the third one, <laughs> there's accidentally a accidentally becomes a drug runner. Yeah. It's it in Key like West. Some, it sounds yeah. like there's a lot of comedy there too. Yeah, and 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 the third one, she uh, there's a uh, she gets involved with semi-professional wrestling, and then the fourth one, she's in Vegas. There's a convention, there's a convention, and you can see there's a unicorn on the cover, um, and there's a there's a convention of of people that follow a TV show called Unicorn Protector League, and I've got a musician who is writing a theme song for me. So oh when God. When Cassandra Metcalf is my narrator, when she does the narration for this one, she's going to add in the theme song. We're going to go to a recording studio and, and the magician, mis, magician, musician and the singers are going to record the theme song and it's going to be in the um, in the in, in the audio book. So that'll be fun. I can't imagine where you came up with that convention in Vegas. Idea. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> what can she do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, uh, we we had so much fun last year at at Twenty Books. It's I. I, I how many times ship... have you been to Twenty Books? I'm sorry. Is this, second, is this your second year going, or how many times? It's my second year. I was there last year, and so this is my second year, and I'm I'm already going next year. I've already invited uh, a friend's daughter, who's a brand new author. I said, come with me. You can stay in my room for free, and and come to Twenty Books because it's That's a great cool. place 
to meet people, to find out all kinds of great stuff, uh, great things uh, that you can pick up. Like one of them, like, okay, this is a good one. For the back of a book, if you don't have tons, um, somebody recommended this, and I can't remember who. So they said, go ahead and put the name of your book and a little thing about your book instead of just titles at the back of your book, the also buy. Also buy. So also buy, I've got the name of the book with a little a little blurb and thought, that's just a really great way to do it because- well, no, that's interesting. So you put that at the back. I actually put the also buys right on the front of my books. So, uh, yeah. I, I used to, and then I switched them to the back. I, you know. Yeah, in the back though, I have a, you know, a, a invite them to my newsletter and, and, and you know, please review and do all that stuff and and yeah. you know or the next book in the series there'll be a preview sometimes those kind of things too but, oh yeah i always throw yeah, the first yeah. chapter of the next book at the back of the book so they have that yeah. to read yeah 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 i usually do a link i usually actually because my books tend to be a hundred thousand words or more i yeah. i tend to do a link rather than make the book thicker and say here's yeah. a link to a free you can read the thing online and and you click it and literally they can just scan it with their phone it's a qr code or whatever but yeah, there's different ways of doing it. It's inter always interesting to me here how people do it and why they yeah. do it that way. You know? Yeah, but, but yeah. Know, being indies, we can change it up all the time, which is great. Yeah, the other nice thing about it is, uh, is that, uh, you know, at the point at which the the book comes out, I'm not necessarily far enough along that I have totally polished that first chapter where, so I can keep replacing the file. <laughs> Online when I pick stuff, which is nice. I don't have to commit it to celluloid, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For this, for this fourth one, I just put. I have a spinoff series, so I put the first chapter of the spinoff series instead of the next June Nash, and that's what I'd been doing for the last two books. Was yeah. a spinoff, putting the first chapter of the spinoff in there, and then once I have the, the fifth book, then I'll replace the spinoff with the fifth book, first chapter. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, anyway, so that's interesting. So how many books do you have out so far for you said four and four? And um, one? I've got four in the June Nash series. I've got one called Four Bullets and a, and a Ghost, which is a paranormal spinoff. And um, then I've got nine with Lisa, nine of the prompt books. And we have another three we're doing. And then we're going to be doing another six with Kickstarter um, maybe next summer. So now is Lisa your writing partner that you that you Zoom with? Yeah, for the prompts, for the prompts, I write them with my friend Lisa Mahoney. Yeah. Okay. Now, does she go to Twenty Books too? No, I tried to talk oh. her into, but she <laughs> could not get away from work. I said, oh. I got you. Well, what kind of does she write? Cozies also. What does she write? Does no, she genre? writes. She writes uh, award-winning short stories, and she has a novel that she's been shopping. She ha doesn't have a. I don't remember if she has an agent or not, but she's trying to. She's she's a professor, so she has to publish. Unfortunately, yeah. so so I because I took, kept telling her indie publish. She's like, I can't because I'm a professor. I need to have. Um, she needs to publish. It's the publisher parish kind of thing. Yeah, there's a, I, I get it. There has there's some credibility. They want a reputable oh, yeah. publisher. I yeah. get it. You can't yeah. self publish everything, but you know, it, I mean, it's it's, it's inter always interesting when you have a writing partner that um, is is doing something different. I think people sometimes think you have you know you have to be on the same page, but no, you guys are doing completely different yeah. things, and you're still able to be yeah. the motivation and the and assist each other, and that's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. guys. We are at halfway through, so if anybody wants to actually ask questions. Feel free to do that. We will do our best to answer them. They should be related to our guest and her writing or me, our writing in general and publishing. We're not going to answer any political questions or any crazy other stuff. That's not what we're here for. But if you want to, uh, and no, no, none of this trolling crap. I will mute you if you start asking sexual questions or other crazy stuff. <laughs> not what we're here for. Uh, and it, we usually have a pretty good crowd, but I always, there's always one or two people that try to ruin it. Anyway, so for the most part... Um, so you've got all these that now. What's the, the vellum? Is is are, everything you've got is out in, in these is paperback and, and ebook or how do you? Yeah, I've these? got paperback, ebook, and audio books. And so um, I also sell. I sell on Amazon. I don't know some other sites, and then I have I sell on Payhip also, so people can buy from me direct for the ebooks. And uh, I might add some paperbacks to Payhip, but I don't know. I, oh, and then I have um, like the coil bound ones. Um, they're off, off my. Um, off my website and through Lulu. So Lulu, yep. interesting. I'll have yeah. to ask I'll have to ask you at twenty books about pay hip because I, I don't know anything about it. But anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so you um 
So you've got them that way. So what, what's the what's the Vela stuff? The Vela stuff is that is that some of the same stuff or it's different stuff? Yeah, that's the um, that's the Amazon Vela. So that's the serial stuff. So I have one called Amy of Earth. She falls through a portal. She's in a world with all these creatures. She's the only human. And then I've got one called Monster Stalkers about two women that are. Uh, it's kind of my take on. It's my homage to Kolchak the Night Stalker, which was one of my favorite shows when I was back in, in school. I have a uh, friend who just did I, an anthology of that. Yeah, the love anniversary. That show. Yeah. Love that show. So this is kind of my homage, but I have two women that are, um, they write for a tabloid and they uh, and they are, there's a, a witch's book and this guy took it to a party and they tore out the spells and passed them around. And so they have to go around and try to catch all these um things that have been released from these spells. And I only have oh, 20 yeah. epi- I only have 20 episodes of that one because I got busy with other things and I didn't really have that many readers. And then what and then I I do so are those, Now are those as heavily planned as your other novels or or I mean have you like written the whole thing before you release it? Obviously you haven't if you ever got No, it. I I usually I I was I was really on a roll. I was doing about 4 to 5,000 um finished words per week for my velas. And then um, I can't remember what happened. Something happened and I got thrown off my schedule and I could really never get back. And then I said, well, you know, I'm just going to work on my June Nash books and write those for a while. Uh, And I've got the sequel for my paranormal mystery that I'm working on. I have about 10 more episodes to go. Um, It's got about 40,000 words, I think, that are on Vela um, that that you can read. So, No, it's fine. I was just curious because, I mean, I it's interesting to have those different options, but sometimes they require a different process and sometimes um, it's just, you know, people do it just to see what they can do. So I was curious how you approached it. You know, it's a, it's really great to test uh, your story and see if you have an audience for it. Mm-hmm. See if you are interested in continuing to write it and you get some feedback. The first year um, I kept telling people I'm making a lot of money. I made $5,500 the first year on Vela doing nothing. I mean, not telling, not, not even real hardly talking about it all. Um, I did one $40 promo that did nothing, but other now, than how, that, how, I mean, is that restricted? How does that work? Do you, are you, are you, is it exclusive for a period of time? I yeah, it, it has is. to be, has to be exclusive and, uh, it has to have been out at least 30 days before you can put it anywhere else. And then you have to, I think you have to say it first appeared on Vela. Um, uh, and then I always, uh, like the first book that I finished, I think I added some stuff to it and maybe re-edited some of the things that were already out. Um, but yeah, it, it has to stay behind a paywall. So you can't put it for free. You can't read them um, on on here. I couldn't come on here and read yeah. the episodes. But it, as long as it's behind a paywall. So my Amy of Earth fantasy, I have a Patreon set up, Patreon set up. But I haven't really, haven't told anybody about it because I wanted to, to be... Um, farther along uh, so the people could could if they didn't want to have to buy it on or read it separately they could just pay what two bucks a, a month and you know read it until they were done and then and then leave the patreon if they didn't want to um if they wouldn't want to wait for uh, it come out because i think it's going to take me about two years to finish that one it's going to be about a thousand pages i think maybe more wow that's big yeah that's yeah big. i got you well that's cool yeah. so, so it's interesting so, uh, what kind of, uh, well, let's see. First of all, guys, don't forget to like uh, the chat. Thank you for the likes already. Don't forget to follow our guest, Melissa, and uh, me as well. And, uh, again, I do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this time for an hour interviewing authors, artists, and musicians. And if you go up to the link in my profile, you can find Third Tab Down is Creator Talk Live replays, which are all posted on YouTube, the full hour-long shows. We chat for an hour here. So what kind of research do you do for what you're doing? Now, obviously, you know, you had you had in-house research for the first book because you had the snakes. Do you still yeah. have a bunch of snakes yeah. there? I okay, so I, the, in the first one, she slips in a pool of blood. So her mother is dating the sheriff, and he shows up, and uh, I had um, the lady who was the line producer for my feature film that I did, my last film that I did, uh had some friend has a friend had a friend who was a police detective so i said well can i get him to read my scenes to make sure they they work and i would send him the scene of the police officers you know talking to her and checking the scene and he would come back with this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong 
And so finally I'm like, okay, I stuck her in a room and had her close her eyes. And that's what I do now. She is, she doesn't listen. She is lazy. She is not interested in, in, she doesn't do social media. She's not interested in what's going on in the world. And she's, as people explain, okay, this is what you need to do. She starts thinking about other things. And when she suddenly comes back to it, they've already explained what was supposed to happen. And so hmm. I don't have to do any research at all. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So <laughs> So you, so your answer to that question is you generally don't do a whole lot of research for these things. Now there, there is in, in book two, I do have the coast guard rescue her. And I talked to a girl from a coast guard boat to just get the gist of what happens just so it would, I mean, it's like a I conversation. Say, I mean, you're, big, got, so. Your newest one's in Vegas. So obviously having been to Vegas, that was your research. You obviously do some research, obviously. I mean, you can't just write, you know, something you've never seen you know, I mean, it's hard. yeah and, and i make up all most of the places she goes especially the towns i just make them up yeah um the town they live in i made it up and and i lived in a little bitty town this is a little town that they live in in this book uh has population of like 2600 and we lived in a little town like that in wisconsin and so i just took the oh, same your research is your life your research is your life the yeah, lived and a lot of the stories, my husband was military, and so a lot of the stories that things that happened to him, things that happened to friends, I had a friend that what happens in the beginning of book book two happened to her, and she told me the story, and I'm like, mm, I'm so using that, and I changed it a little bit, but I listen. I mean, as writers, you have to listen. Just listen sure. and, and write sure. things down, and you know, you have to be careful around a writer because anything you say or do, we're going to put it in a book. We're just going to. Oh my God. Yeah. I have several examples of that, but look, a lot of times what's funny is like, I, I told a story that was related to my parents and they were like, where did you come up with that crazy idea? <laughs> they did it. <laughs> it, was, it was me walking in on them having sex when they were, when I was 17 and I put it in, a, I put it, in, I made it happen to one of my main characters where his daughter walks in and they're like, that was crazy. Where'd you come up with that? Well, dad, I came with it out of my head from that time it happened with us. Still oh, having therapy, God. yeah. What happened? We don't even remember that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It, yeah. it actually it ended up being a great, it was the ending of the book, and it was a great comedic moment after a really intense story. So it ended up being funny because, oh, nice. you know, the, it's all awkward. Nice. The daughter walks in, and what the, what are you doing? Oh, my God, Dad. You oh, know? God. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Hey, you know, every, everything is fair game. Everything is. is fair game. It is. Yeah. And I love to play awkward moments for comedy. I love stuff like that where it's just like I have a my one of my characters is a robot detective who who partners with this Luddite uh and they go they go to this they go to this cemetery and it's a it is happens to be popular with a group of metal detector fans. Well, so all these people are using metal detectors and they don't know he's a robot. So oh, that's crazy. So it's hilarious because he's walking along and the, the oh my god we've got a big load over here. <laughs> every time he passes by. You know. That is awesome. I love that to is write really stuff awesome. Like that. I love to write stuff like that because it totally you know it totally they're trying to do a serious investigation in the middle of all this comedy going on in the background of all these people. Oh, it's just so yeah. much fun to juxtaposition you know. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. no matter no matter what I write, there's always it's very heavy in comedy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because that's that's just what I love, and that's that's what I do best. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. I do a lot of banter, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of this kind of stuff. So yeah, like I said, I take all these situations and I find a way to milk comedy out of them. So uh, uh, it's fun, yeah. it's fun, you know, especially because I have a lot of intense. I mean, it's it's a noir, it's noir, so it's got a lot of intense action, and it's got the police procedural and all that. So you need that lightheartedness to to kind of yes. break it up when the tension yeah. gets good. So it's good. So I mean, you as far as um uh when you when you tell who are some of your authors that have influenced you? Who are some of the people that you read the the most that you tell people about? Um, gosh, you know, um, I love Janet Ivanovich's first five books in her Stephanie Plum series. After five, it's like the same stuff over and over again. But the first five were hysterical. They were so funny. Uh, Stephen King, The Stand. Oh my God, that's like my favorite book. That is um, a great book. Yeah. I read it. I read it for the first time on a camping trip, which was not smart. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a lot to be lugging around on a camping trip. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and it and it was and it scared me too. And I, I and I, I wouldn't get out of the tent to do anything. I just stayed in the tent. I was so scared. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oops. Plug in my phone. It's okay. Yeah, you plug in your phone and it pauses you for a minute. <laughs> uh, it oh, temporarily, no. but it's okay. It happens. So, okay. Hang so on you were leaving, what, your husband was on this camping trip? What did he say about you refusing to leave? Oh, no, it was a boyfriend. It was a oh, lot of years ago. Whoa. That was Let's a lot of I years ago. Do All this. Right. Your boyfriend probably was pissed that you're reading this book and you won't come out of the tent. <laughs> I know, really. Really, he's like, come in and, you know, get some firewood. Nope, not getting out of the tent. Nope, not at all. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm plugged in. I'll just have to hold this because it doesn't want to. Oh, is it charging now? Oh, I yeah, it's charging now, yeah. So I'm charging my phone now, but I'll just hold on to it with one hand. Uh, you know, I, I read pretty much anything. Uh, That's what I do. That's why mine moves from time to time because I'm just holding yeah. it up the whole time. Yeah. And my, yeah. my yeah my, my folks always went to the library sale and you would get for two bucks you know you fill a brown paper bag with books and i would just go along and just grab every book that was at least this thick you know uh, huge books i really like sci-fi as a as a gasma foundation trilogy um ray bradbury martian chronicles is probably one of my favorite books i just got a a, a used copy uh, it's not a great used copy. I'm gonna have to find another one just to reread because I haven't reread them in a while. I've got um, that. I've got a hardcover of that on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you oh, ever read Canical for Leibowitz? I love Canical for Leibowitz. God, that's a great book. Oh, no, no I haven't. Yeah, Miller's a Canical for Leibowitz. It's it's really a fascinating. Mm. It's a post-apocalyptic type of thing, uh, and uh, and it's fascinating. I love it. It's a great read. It's been very, the very much influenced me. Also, uh, if you've never read Lord Valentine's Castle by Robert Silverberg, oh my God, that is a treat. no. I haven't. I that haven't. Is, Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, it's a thick one too. It's basically like a epic space fantasy, is what it is. His oh, world building nice. is—you'll you'll never see anything like his world building. It's unbelievable. He knows the horticulture. He knows all the—I oh, mean, nice. he gets into all the stuff, and it's like he creates this world and it's so vivid. I love it. It's great, um, and it's an unreliable narrator, but told well. So it's really interesting. Interesting. Like thing. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, but yeah, those are some great books. So I mean, when people when people compare you and you 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 know you people are like, oh, what do you who do you write like? Who's who's similar to your books? What do you tell people? I get people who compare me to Carl Hassan. Mm -hmm. um, Carl he Hassan writes, awesome. uh, yeah, Razor Girl, and um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. So, he writes very someone... funny books set in Florida that are pretty wacky. Yeah, yeah. Very um, I get compared to Janet Ivanovich a little bit, uh, but mostly Carl Hassan usually. So. That, that yeah. I've heard. So, oh, it's good. I mean, they're, Carl yeah. Sun's very popular. So, I mean, this is the worst place yeah. to be, I'll tell you. Yeah, I like his stuff. Yeah. I do too. I do too. I enjoy reading him. Uh, and his, a lot of his are standalones, though, not really series. So, it's kind of an mm -hmm. interesting thing. You know, they have similarities, but they're kind of a, their own thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are you, so what you're working on now is, what, what are you working on now? You're working on, you're still working on your big epic, epic fantasy thing. Yeah, the epic fantasy after Vegas, I'll be able to get back to working on that again. I'm very excited about, oh, I'm sliding away. There we go. I'm excited about getting back to working on Amy of Earth because I really love that story. It, it's fun. There's a lot of humor in it. Um, I'm going to write the last two books in the June Nash series. I figure I'll, six is good and I'll, in the last one, I'll, I'll probably put a note like, if you want more, let me know. <laughs> I'm not planning on writing more, but I'll write another if I have enough people say, write another one. Um, and so yeah, that's mainly, mainly it is, is um, and then the second book in my paranormal series, I want to finish, I have about 10 episodes left to finish and then it has to go to the editor. Um, and then, but I really want to, I want to, I'd love to have Amy of Earth finished in two years so um, well that's actually that's an interesting point i didn't ask you about yet is your whole the the you do how much you're doing self-publishing so do you do you have you have an editor you actually have a regular editor or an editor oh yeah yeah i have a couple of different editors i use um uh uh the one i just used most recently laurie dietrich just did uh how to how to six your, no how to stroke your stray <laughs> i can't remember what it was called did that one um and then i have um a group of people that look for any errors and oh the last thing that i always do before it goes to the editor is i listened to my book i always listen to my books and you will catch um 
uh, awkward phrasing, you will catch repeated words, you will catch missing words, you will catch misspelled words. In the my first words, yeah, yeah, lots of duplicate, like the, the, yeah. Yeah, get rid of all, the, I hate that, gotta get rid of all those. In the very first book, um, she's got a, a sidekick dog called Cyrano. And in the first book, I'm listening to it and the computer's calling it Cryano, Cryano, Cryano. And I'm like, why is the computer mispronouncing the dog's name? I spelled it wrong through the whole book. <laughs> like, oh my God. So yeah. anyway, so I was able to fix that. But uh, just so much, uh, you can catch so much with listening to it and listen to it at regular speed. Don't speed it up and follow along on your computer as you listen. And that's just like, if I can give any one piece people, of advice, that is it. I tell people that it's it's like I always know like the current client. Uh, if you if she'd have read her book aloud, it would have been a much better book. She didn't. She didn't. And all the rep repetition and the logic flow would have gone out because she would have seen it immediately. And you yeah, don't. Yeah. You, you hear something different. Is I, I just recently had the really good experience of having my, my one of my my first novel that I've ever had put on audiobook was Shortcut, and that's like my seventh novel. And I I list, I went on a trip. Uh, to launch it, and the audiobook didn't come out for a couple of weeks, so I had the thing, so I listened to it in the car on this, you know, drive. It was like rediscovering my own novel, and I was, you know, I was riveted to it the whole, you know, 11-hour drive listening to this thing. But I also found some stuff to fix, and we went back and fixed it before it came out, and we were able to tweak. Nice. You nice. You know? And so now I'm like, man, I know I need to, li I've got another one we're producing right now, and I'm listening to it as he goes so we can fix all the little things, you know. I just never done that before. I've I've had I've had little short stories on audiobook, but never on that level. And it's just it's a really fun experience to experience your book that way. Do you do stuff on audio too, or is it all so far? Um... Yeah, the first two books are on audio, and that's when I started listening. Was when I was getting ready to send them to the narrator. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, and then books three and four she'll be doing uh, book three in November, and probably book four in December or January, um, and then. Um, you know, as soon as I finish a book, she'll they go to her. But that's that's another of the reason to listen to it because, you know, you're looking for any tongue twisters and you're looking for anything that's awkward to say or to to, to hear, you know. And um, uh, and then sometimes uh, when I listen to the proof, I like she'll have made a mistake, but I like her mistake better than what I wrote. So sometimes I'll just change it to what she said instead and just like, OK, it's fine. It can stay because I like her word better than my word. That happened like three or four times with the last book. Yeah, sometimes sometimes the mistake is 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 so close <laughs> I don't even worry about it either. It'll be just like a couple where and I'm like nobody's gonna notice that. Nobody's gonna notice. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you do notice that that was an improvement. Dang, I wish I'd written it that way. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, it's like oh my god, she did she she her word choice was better. And sometimes saying it out loud, um, your word choice will be different. That's why you have to follow along. And people will say. Well, I read my book and I read it out loud. He said, no, that's that's total. That's you can't do that. You have to have the computer read it and you listen to it or, or, person, or have somebody read it and record it and, you know, or somebody else read it while you're while you're following along. But if you read it yourself, you're going to fill in words that aren't there and you're going to change words. Uh, you, you just you you're just going you to stop paying attention because your mind goes to all these the subtext and all these things and oh I remember when I changed yes. that and I did that and you're still mechanically going through the reading but you're not paying attention to every single word that's the exactly. problem exactly exactly that's, that's why problem. you have to have somebody else computer is great I have I use um, Alex the voice Alex and even though it's a woman in my that's the lead character in my book it doesn't sound I don't like the female voices on the Mac. But I like the the Alex voice because it sounds the most human. So yeah, yeah. Um, I use so that one have, to listen. How so? You your process is you write how many drafts do you usually do of a book? Um, this last one was different, but normally about three. But as I finish a chapter, it's done. So when I finish the last chapter, the whole book is done, and it goes to the editor. So I, I write one chapter at a time, and that's that's it, one chapter. That's why Vela was such a great fit for me because you write. Yeah. One episode at a time. Right, but you write one chapter at a time, then you 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 wait and send the whole book to the editor, or one chapter to the editor. At a time. Oh, the whole book, yeah, the whole oh, book. So yeah, I'll, I write, you know, I I try to write a chapter every couple of days. So if I'm really on, sometimes I can write a chapter in a day, but usually it's it's and this last one was was really tough. Like I said, the first thirteen chapters I kept going, they just don't they don't feel right. What book again. I'm writing? I mean, like so my 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 for some reason my 
John Simon uh, noir thrillers, I can write 3,000 words a day easy. With, with my current noir, which is a, my first straight noir mystery, has no speculative element to it. I'm uh, to, if I can hit 1,200 words a day, that's been a good day. That's that's typical for me. Is that I, I, I it just takes longer. So it really depends on what I'm writing. There are other things where I've written, you know, 5,000 words a day. It really depends on what I'm writing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, I mean, the same, yeah. And the magic is the rewrite for me. That's where you know, I go back and yeah. figure out, okay, I, I used this this word over and over again. Now let me find some descriptions and, and, and make the nuance. And, 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 oh, did I hint at this theme enough? Did I do this? And, you know, I, I got to go add a lot of description and different stuff that I don't, you know. I'm, oh, you know what? I didn't talk yeah. about what they're wearing. I... I, I forgot what color her eyes yeah. were, all that kind of yeah. stuff. I get to fix yeah. It. My, my first, I, the first pass through, I usually do as much dialogue as possible. Then I go through and I, I add the description and then I go back through and my editor calls it juning up. So I go through and add all June's quirky weirdness to it, to give it the, the feel for, um, which I think why I had such a hard time with this, with the fourth one is because I hadn't, I, I took like a year off. And it's like, mm, I can't do that with this next. I'm going to write five and six at the same time. So then I'll yeah. then I'll have that feel for her. You get out of the voice. You get out of the head. I have to go back and reread to get back in. Yes. Yeah, but some, yes. some of them I can automatically return to, and it's really great. But some of them, it, it's really hard when you get out of it to get back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and having the audio book to listen to helps. Um, like tomorrow on the plane flying out to Vegas, I'm going to be listening to the computer read me book four so that I can make sure that it, oh, sorry, book three, so that I can make sure it looks okay and then I can send it to the editor, uh, send it to the narrator um, on Sunday. So, okay, so how, how do you, okay, so after you send it to the editor, you can bring it back, you do a polish pass or something, and then what happens? What do you do your formatting yourself? Or what do you send it out to more proofers or somebody? What do you do? What's your process? Now it's on, it's on vellum, so everything's all ready to go. I will gotcha. send it to my, uh, to my last set of eyes, and they take a, they, they read it and they let me know if there's any issues. Then it goes to my arc readers, and they'll let me know if there's any issues. So I think they found seven errors. And unfortunately, I'd already printed five books. So the books that I'll have, there's seven errors in the book in this one that I'll have at, at Vegas. Um, but uh, that's, I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> well, I had a couple where, where the one page got inserted. So all the chapters started on this side of the, this side of the page instead of that side. And I was so, and, the, and even the title page was, was on this side instead of that. And that was frustrating. But you know what? Nobody complained about it. And I only sold a few copies, but... Those are now my collector's edition, uh, you know. Yeah, this is just rare, things like um, books, a missing word, like yeah. a missing yeah. word here and there, um, uh, I missing like that, an I S or, you know, that kind of thing. In, in Shortcut, I did I did really real math and real science. And so there were, there were actually um, th uh, math equations. And some of the equations, parts of the equations didn't show up, I found out. So some oh, people... No. You know, everything got fixed in the ebook, which is most of my sales. But there were some yeah. some people got print books that are missing part of the equation, and I, oh, I said, hopefully they're not the math geniuses that are going to figure it out. But you know, I had to go back and fix that. You know, that was yeah. embarrassing. But it, it's because when you actually put equations into your text, it's very complicated how Word does it. And then when you go through multiple formats and this, that, and the other, it, it things get screwed up. That's what happened. Oh, and, uh, can you put them in as a picture so that it doesn't screw with it? You could. You could. I had put them in as a insert formula, actually. But yes, huh. some of the stuff. That, I ended up, some of the stuff we eventually the way we fixed it. Some of the stuff the way we approached the ebook was to put it as a picture, because we were mm -hmm. like, oh, it's going to be all over the place with the formatting of the ebook. So we would just put a yeah. picture. It all depends yeah. on what we need to do. But yeah, exactly. So yeah, a lot of that stuff. So then, then uh, at what point does it go to the audio book reader? Do you try to get those out simultaneously, um, or you just let the audio come along later? Yeah, the first two it was a couple of years, um, but this one, uh, the third one has been a while. But the fourth one will go out. It just came out um, the thirtieth of October, so it'll go to the narrator next month. So that that'll be the fastest I've done it. But and then when the next two books come out, they'll go right away to her so that we can have all six books out. Now, in you're audio. using the same narrator for the series, but do you use her for, for everything you do or yeah. just the series? Um, so far, just the series. Um, I, I might use her for the spinoff. I don't know. It, it's a different, it's, it's. I don't know. I, I'll have to talk to her about it and see. Well, see. And how did you find her? I found her on TikTok. 
Uh, oh, she yeah. she did she would do readings live. Her name is Cassandra Medcalf Med, Medcalf, and she is fantastic. Uh, she was funny to watch. I liked her videos, and she would do live live readings as she was recording. And I was out somewhere, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna see. I I know because I knew I wanted to do. I had a narrator before, and I really loved her, but she didn't have time to do any more of the books, so I needed to start over again. So yeah. I thought, you know, I'm out. I'm just going to see if she's if and I thought she has so many followers and so many people and she'll never have time. And then she wrote me back and I'm like, whoa. And we made a connection. And we got together last year at uh, at uh, 20 books. She was there at 20 books. So I got to actually see her in person and chat with her. So that was fun. So does she, do you actually do do um does she do you do them through ACX or how do you do the release of them? No, I do them through Find Away Voices. Interesting. OK. Yeah, because then because I sell direct on my website, uh, and I don't I don't have a contract for anybody, so I can have them anywhere. So yeah, so it's, it's all download. Yeah. It's all downloads. Yeah, it's all downloads. Yeah, Book Funnel and PayHip work together, and they deliver the books. Yeah. Okay. And then gotcha. Find a Way also has them out everywhere. So. Gotcha. All right. So our guest on Creator Talk Live today has been Melissa. Banzac, if I could not screw up your name. Ban Banzac? That's close. Banzac. That's close, yeah. Banzac. Banzac. I got to remember the Banzac. Sorry. So please follow her here on TikTok. Check out what she's doing. Where else can they find you? Do you have a, by the way, do you have a link to your books in your profile on your TikTok? Can they just Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to my profile and you click my link tree, that takes you to everything. And, um, um, yeah. Oh, and my, my fourth book, which is out right now, is only 99 cents through the fifth. So oh. you can get it for 99 cents. Go so. get that Kindle deal, guys. Get that Kindle deal. 99 cents. You can't beat it. Even if, even cents, if you didn't yeah. like it, you can gift it to somebody. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah. great deal. You don't, don't need to read the books in order. So that's fine. Yeah. yeah they're standalones. Um, so that's great. Yeah. So check her out. Where, and you also are, I assume, Melissa Bonchek, Bonchek.com. Yes, melissabonzak.com. Uh, you can see it there. I think you see it on well, the really screen, my name down there. there. Yeah. <laughs> so just, yeah, my first and last name, uh, .com, and uh, my books are all on there. There you go. And uh, so check her out. And uh, thank you for being our guest, Melissa. Thank you for coming and chatting with me. I look forward to seeing you next yes. week. I'm sure I'll run into you at some thank point. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. And you'll, you're signing at the at the rave on Friday, right? The yep, 10th. yep, yep. I'll be there. Yay, I'll be there. Very good. Yeah, I'll be there. Very good. I'll be so there. I want to I want to look for your robot book. Oh, I'll have a couple of them. Yeah, I'll have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're sliding away. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> all right. And I will post this as soon as I have a chance to edit it, probably later tomorrow or the mm -hmm. next day. It'll, it'll go up on YouTube, and I'll send you a link. So okay, you, may be in, you may be in the air at the time, but you'll get it, so you can share it if you want to share it. Oh, yeah, I will. I will. Right. Thank you. Thank Guys, you. thank you for showing up for Creator Talk Live. This is our last, this is episode nine. This is our last show for the next week. I will be in Vegas next week, and I will try to do some things, but I'm not going to be able to have the space or time to do interviews in this kind of setting because it's very noisy at a convention with thousands of people. So I, uh, I will be back the week after, hopefully with some new guests, and we'll get going. Thank you guys for sticking with me on the show. Again, go to my profile, click the third tab, and go see our Creator Talk Live episodes all on YouTube if you missed them. And uh, guys, have a great weekend, and we will see you soon. Take care. This has been Creator Talk Live.